Okay, so welcome to Feature Fridays, and today we've got uh, Jörg and Data joining us. So, Jörg, please uh, introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Jörg Lev, based out of Germany, and I work as a technical product manager in Myanmar's cloud provider business unit. Excellent. Thanks, Jörg. And Data, please uh, introduce yourself. Hi, um, I am Data. I am a product manager um, who manages uh, tenant app and uh, all the related functionalities in the Realize operations. Awesome. Thanks, Data. Thanks for joining us today. And that's a good segue because we're actually going to be talking about tenant app today and uh, covering some of the basics of tenant app as we've got a, a few episodes that we're going to dive into some of the tenant app functionality around metering and monitoring. So, um, Jörg, I guess let's let's first go to you and sort of just, mm -hmm. just discuss, um, you know, what is the tenant app at a really sort of 50,000 foot level and then we'll bring it down and go into some of the, the key functionality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tenant app is a component that you as a service provider um, install in your um, management stack that allows you to um, connect and integrate VRealize operations with VMware Cloud Director. And to be sure, this is a, a free component, right? This isn't something we charge for. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Excellent. So um, it is part of the um, yeah the flex core uh, pricing, and it allows you to uh, publish certain information um, from VR ops into the tenant portal uh, of Cloud Director. But it also can be used um, as a chargeback and billing mechanism for your um, infrastructure as a service offerings. As okay. A so it has two core uses then. One is to give, uh, if you're providing infrastructure as a service today using Cloud Director or any, you know, if the application services that Cloud Director now provides with extensibility, you have the ability then to provide your tenants with that ability to see their performance, capacity, that mm -hmm. type of thing, right? Dashboards. And then yeah. the other side of the functionality is, is metering and billing information. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Okay, and how does this work then? So how does this uh, deploy into kind of um, Cloud Director and what is the relationship with vRealize operations? Mm -hmm. So let's assume you have a, a regular Cloud Director environment where you and your management stack typically have all the, all the components that uh, belong to a Cloud Director installation. So you have multiple, um, one or more or uh, Cloud Director cells. You have a uh, vCenter, obviously, that runs as a infrastructure, providing all the resources for the provider VDC, and typically some uh, NSX environment to um, use all the network automation that Cloud Director um, yeah, provides. And then um, to use the tenant app, of course, you also have a VRealize operations instance or cluster um, that is connected to the vCenter to gather the metrics and also to um, NSX to gather um, network specific metrics. And then tenant app is deployed as a single new um, V app or a single new VM that you install into the management network. It deploys as a single OVA file and then um, you connect it to your ops on the one hand side and you specify the cloud director connection on the other side um, to allow yeah, publishing certain VR ops information into cloud director. So what's this, um, if I've got, if I'm using vRealize operations today to manage some of my virtualized infrastructure, like a, you know, a lot of service providers are today, um, well, how do I um, configure the interface in vRealize operation? And am, am I, um, uh, you know, am I doing anything different here? At Data, have you got any kind of, um, I think you've got a, a diagram you've, you can share with us on this and how it actually works together? Mm -hmm. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Sure. So um, this is exactly what um, Yorick was talking about, right? Uh, what does Tenant App do? It provides two or three different kind of interface interfaces for the service provider. The first interface is what you see on the left, which is you can log into Tenant App and configure the billing um, for your tenants. You can also configure access control on, okay, what are the things that the tenant has access to when he comes from this, the bottom arrow that you see from the vCloud director. So um, this is the tenant interface. The bottom arrow is the tenant interface, um, wherein a tenant um, can log in via vCloud director and see information such as um, what is the infrastructure that I'm using, what is their capacity, what are their metrics, and so on. 
Mm-hmm. Um, for the provider, there is one additional arrow which you see on top, Sweet APIs plus billing. This interface is provided for the providers so that they can integrate with it and integrate their own billing systems into um, this virtual appliance, pull the information from here, and then feed it into their billing systems. The way this whole scenario works is by having VR Ops as the backend. And VR Ops has basically a bunch of data collectors which can data collect from vCloud Director and vCenter and correlate that information, right? So if you know that a VM is running under an org VDC, that's collected from vCloud Director. What is the CPU utilization of this VM is collected from vCenter. And they are both correlated together um, in VR Ops. It also has a pricing engine on top of it, um, which basically converts these utilization numbers into dollar numbers based on the policies that are configured by the provider into um, the VROPs via tenant tag. You, a provider can potentially use VROPs directly for metering purposes by invoking the suite APIs. Uh, but if he comes via or he may use tenant app as the proxy to hit VROPs. One additional thing that you will get by hitting tenant app via APIs is all the bill uh, related APIs. So you can generate bills, obtain bills from here and expose it to your tenants and so on. Those APIs are exclusive to the tenant app virtual appliance. This is how the deployment looks like. So from, um, this is quite interesting and, and I, I'm glad you've made the difference differentiation there between kind of the, the metrics that you can use to pull out VR ops for metering versus the kind of billing side of, uh, of uh, metric information, which you can pull from tenant, tenant app API. Because many providers right. today will like, they'll just extract all of their information and then they'll have some system to kind of grind it all. And um, you know, whatever their CRM systems are or, or um, business operational systems are to create that bill. So what we're saying now is we can do a certain portion of that in uh, the tenant app. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, and how, how seen, does this, sorry, you're gone. Yeah, I've seen with a lot of providers um, in past having all sorts of mechanism and homegrown yeah. tools that they use to gather the data um, if they're more advanced, they gather it already from VR Ops, but a more basic one really get raw data from vCenter. And then they have to do a lot of the calculation and the, this relationship building between the actual metric for a VM um, into the construct of VCloud directors or VMware Cloud directors. So to figure out um, which VM belongs to which tenant and which org VDC, do I want to charge them based on allocation, based on real um, usage, based on configuration and so on. Um, so a lot of that logic can now be very simply done uh, by using the pricing policies in the tenant app. But right. since we have still have the APIs for the bills and for the raw metrics um, through the tenant app, um, it's of course still possible for the provider um, to feed the resulting information um, into some yeah, sort of downstream business portals or billing um, systems that they have, because that's typically also in place in a lot of providers that they have some additional, I don't know, discounting mechanisms or mm. some additional yeah. um, just for their charging and, and billing some, some downstream mechanisms, but um, they don't want to um, get into all these nitty gritty details of handling the VR, uh, vCenter and VM metrics on their own and then the relationship to cloud director um, objects and entities. Yeah, and, and Data, how do you see this from a, a product management perspective? How do you see the, the kind of billing functionality here growing? I mean, obviously we're, we're covering as many kind of um, metrics as we can today. And as Cloud Director builds in more services, I guess we'll be introducing more metrics and more capability to, to build against those services. What does the kind of alignment there look like from, from a product management perspective? Yeah, that's a great question, right? Um, we, I see this evolving in a couple of different ways. One is, uh, like you rightly mentioned, uh, because of our primary interfaces for the provider so that he can meter and bill for the infrastructure services and other services that uh, he is exposing, uh, we would like to track all of these additional services um, via tenant tap. For example, um, our next immediate roadmap item talks about um, how can we uh, meter app launchpad services exposed uh, via vCloud Director, right? 
or even the container service engine um, related uh, services, right? So that's one area in which the roadmap will, ev will evolve. Increase the coverage of services that I can meter, right? Then there is a second direction in which the roadmap will evolve, which is there is one important arrow that is drawn from vCloud director uh, to tenant app, the tenant interface, right? Today, it is um, the, the purpose of this is to expose billing information and bare minimum. Um, if, you, if, you, if I know the VM, I can come to this UI and look at my metrics and so on. Yeah. But this is a very powerful construct, right? Using this, you, we can make tenant app as a window through which we can expose services that are present in VROPS. We can potentially make something like CloudWatch available via tenant app because VROPS already tracks these metrics. An API interface provided to tenant will basically make this as a CloudWatch equivalent kind of an interface for the tenant um, uh, uh, being exposed via an interface. We can expose other monetizable features to service providers, such as they can build custom dashboards for tenants and expose it via this interface and make money out of it. So uh, that's the second direction in which um, I see uh, the roadmap evolving. So these are the two primary ways in which tenant app will evolve um, in future. Uh, not to mention the flexibility in the pricing. Many of them also use it for billing purposes, right? We would also want to make sure that uh, there are several business models um, when it comes to billing. Some may want to bill something like AWS, uh, like reserved instance kind of billing, right? Um, now that's not something that would be available just with a um, monitoring system. There has got to be additional logic to say, was this VM committed? How long was this VM committed for? When should I charge? When should I stop and so on? So we intend to grow the roadmap in that area as well. So th those are the three key areas, I would say. Okay, okay. So it seems like Tenant App is um, taking a really kind of front front role here for for metering and providing monitoring information to a tenant. Um, York, do you have a, a, an instance of Tenant App we could kind of have a look at and just want to understand how it appears to the tenant, how it appears to service provider, and then um, also, you know, as a service provider, we're doing a very high level kind of view today on capabilities and stuff like that, but where can I go to find it and how would I go about deploying it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me quickly share my screen here with the connection to my demo environment. Cool. So um, as we discussed before, the tenant app is a component that connects virtualized operations to VMware Cloud Director. And to do that, um, there are different well, components in the infrastructure needed. Um, one important component is the Cloud Director Management Pack for VROps. Mm -hmm. This is a regular management pack that you install into vRealize operations, and that makes vRealize operations aware of the constructs and the data model in Cloud Director. So it allows VROps to understand concepts like an organization, an organization VDC, a VApp, and so on. To install that, um, that's the regular uh, repository um, section in VROps, where you can um, see the, uh, the Cloud Director Management Pack and install the Cloud Director Management Pack. You download the Management Pack itself and the um, tenant app from the, uh, the marketplace, the VMware marketplace. Right. where you log in and then uh, you download one OVA file for the tenant app and the management pack um, zip file that you install into, um, into VROps with the regular uh, VROps sort of mechanisms for that. Okay. Once you've installed uh, the management pack, um, you can see that even in the dashboards, there are a whole bunch of um, out of the dash, uh, out of the box dashboards for uh, Cloud Director related that help you as a service provider, um, even to be more efficient in your day-to-day -day operation. So that's one important aspect of the whole um, yeah, idea of using VROps in a VCD environment. So for example, in the environment, we can see um, in the Cloud Director Management Pack, these um, views that relate vSphere resources to tenants and Cloud Director instances. You have some um, them up view from a provider perspective with the different provider VDCs. And then you can see which 
of the organizations and org VDCs are consuming which providers VDCs and so on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the other component that you install is the VROps tenant app. So that's one VM that you deploy just using the regular vCenter um, OVA deployment mechanism where you just um, provide some information for the first boot, like the, the network configuration. And then in the first configuration, you, um, yeah, you just connect it to um, vRealize operations and then uh, you can access it through a different uh, portal, through a different um, URL uh, that belongs to the tenant app. And in this um, tenant app view as a provider, you can um, have a, subset of the well, the dashboards and the information of VROps um, to consume and to look at for day-to-day -day operations. But that's also where you configure um, all your uh, pricing policies for the chargeback and all the connections and the publishing into Cloud Director on a per tenant base. I see your app, app launch pad there. Is that, um, is that an organization or is that? that is an, yeah, that is an organization in okay. uh, Cloud Director that's uh, automatically configured by app launch pad. Now to um, get the full picture, the view from a, a tenant perspective, when I'm switching over to um, my Cloud Director instance, here I'm logged in as an org admin into one of my, uh, or my tenant URL. Mm -hmm. Um, where I can usually use this user interface, obviously, to manage my virtual machines and my vApps that I run in my org VDC. And when the, ten, uh, the provider published for me the, um, the access to the tenant app, then I can see in the um, operations manager menu um, automatically um, the point of view from my tenant perspective. So I also have a, a few dashboards where I can see the overview now over my org VDCs, over the VApps that I am running, and additional information that the um, provider might want to um, share with me and give me access to. So and that's then, the, the overall sorry. components here. Yeah, sorry. And those dashboards, they're static dashboards, right? They can't currently, be... Yeah, currently they are um, static dashboards, but that's something that, uh, that I mentioned is on the roadmap to allow a provider to have some, uh, create some custom dashboards and then publish these custom dashboards in the tenant view. And you can restrict um, different tenants to access to tenant app? Is that also something that's available? Yeah, absolutely. So from a, a provider perspective, when I'm going back to the provider interface in the tenant app, there are some very fine-grained mechanisms available to um, restrict what information you want to publish into the tenant portal. So first of all, you can enable um, the plugin access. So enable the view for the tenant app from a tenant on a per tenant base. Um, that might be something depending on your um, yeah, business model as a provider, you might want to just give your um, certain customers or certain of your tenants access to that. Mm -hmm. And then within the um, configuration, you can very fine-grained configure which of the different sections and dashboards you want to uh, publish to the tenant. And um, since some of the section is even very fine-grained about the metrics um, for the VMs that VROps collect, um, you can even go into the very deep details and configure really on a per metric base which of these metrics will be or can be selected by the tenant or not. Right, right. So for, um, this is really, really useful, I imagine for service providers who have been providing um, like a public cloud service today or private cloud services with Cloud Director and haven't until now been giving their um, their tenants access to kind of see some of the performance information or maybe it's been a, a kind of a managed service and they haven't had a view on it or they've had to do reports elsewhere and then publish them to the tenant somehow. So this really gives them an instant opportunity to uplift their service offering and provide them, you know, dashboards of their um, V apps, organizations or whatever, um, and give them that view straight away, just like you'd get in like a hyperscale cloud. You would have your you know, ability to configure the infrastructure and the services, and then your ability to monitor and manage them. Absolutely, yeah. And since we realize operations already has the connection configured um, when you set up the VROps environment in a VCD context, um, you set up all these different endpoints for vCenter, for Cloud Director, for NSX, and so on. Um, so VROps already has the insight of all the information and the data. 
Now, with that in place in the VR Ops database, the tenant app gives a very, very simple way to um, yeah, make some of this data, which makes sense in a tenanted context, um, make that available directly in the uh, vCloud Director tenant UI without any additional effort for you as a, a provider to set that up because please, uh, well, out of the uh, box dashboards, for example, for org organization overview, org VDC overview and so on, um, they already provide some good value um, for the tenants. Right, right. And I, I guess I, I have to ask this because, um, you know, it's obviously front of mind for a lot of organizations today is NSXT. Uh, I, I'm guessing then that this, um, you know, this tenant app is kind of reliant on the metrics that VROPS is, is collecting. And if VROPS is collecting NSXT, then that kind of filters into these views. Would that be a, a correct assumption? So um, that, I guess that's one question for you um, about sure. the <laughs> state <laughs> of NSXT that. support on the roadmap. <laughs> sure. Let me uh, take that. So we started off with NSXV. Um, and you're right, uh, the data from NSXT is already being collected by VROPS. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do not have today is the relationship between these NSXT collected objects and the vCloud director objects. If you remember in our very first discussion, we said we collect data from VCD, we collect data from vCenter and correlate them, right? Mm -hmm. Now with NSXT, we are collecting data from both of these places, but we are not doing the correlation yet. That's an immediate roadmap item for us. Okay, great, good to know. And, and what does the um, kind of the, the rest of the roadmap look like? That you, you alluded to some things earlier, but uh, what are the kind of core next steps for you guys in terms of where tenant apps going to be providing additional capabilities to cloud providers and tenants? So um, we have um, we have planned our um, the releases with particular themes in mind. Um, so the release that we did in last October was themed around uh, providing chargeback uh, manager parity. Uh, mm -hmm. There was an earlier tool called chargeback manager, which provided similar functionality. Um, so October release was themed with uh, providing parity to it. The release that we did in um, April was all about pricing flexibility. So we added a lot of um, improvements into our um, pricing policy section where you can do a lot of flexible pricing and um, uh, charge your consumers accordingly, right? Uh, the theme that we have for our immediate next release is vCloud Director Service Coverage. So we want to increase the coverage of services that are offered um, on top of vCloud Director via Tenant App, as well as um, the services that can be offered by using VR ops via tenant app. So the focus of immediate next release will be to cover some of these, um, such as uh, app launch pad, container service engine, support for cloud director service is also something uh, that we have on our roadmap uh, straight away. Um, and uh, things that uh, Yorick was talking about, such as what are the services that we can, that we can enable from VR ops side, right? Um, the ability to expose custom dashboards, the ability to expose alerts that are uh, created by VR ops um, to the tenants, ability to expose um, the metrics uh, via the API uh, way um, so that they get CloudWatch sort of an experience. Um, mm -hmm. Those are some of the things um, that we have in our uh, immediate roadmap uh, for the next release. Very so important to add yeah. in here um, is first of all for the uh, current April release, so the 2.4 release, that's currently um, GA in, mm -hmm. for the tenant app. A lot of the improvements um, really went into the configuration for these pricing policies. And I think we will have a, a separate uh, yeah. session about the details of these pricing policies. But important um, here are two things. First of all, um, a lot of the functionality that we built into the tenant app um, in this 2.4 release came based on feedback from providers that were using tenant app in past and missed some flexibility in the pricing models. So all the, uh, the configuration and the items in the pricing policies really were based on uh, partner feedback. And the other thing is um, from the very beginning of the um, tenant app, we already have some um, generic rate factors in there based on vCenter tax or VCD metadata that already allow you to um, add some pricing policies for additional services like backup as a service or um, any 
additional monitoring services that you as a provider might want to offer. However, it is of course some effort to um, build some automation about the tag or metadata creation in uh, vCenter or Cloud Director, and then to um, yeah, model that into the pricing policy. So in future, we want to have, at least for the extensions that uh, come with, cloud, with the Cloud Director platform, like App Launchpad and Container Service Extension, we want to have a more um, easier way to um, yeah, consume and charge and meter them um, out of the box. Yeah, and I think that's, that's um, you know, for the folks who don't know that App Launchpad is, um, you know, a, a, a mechanism within Cloud Director for um, for you as a cloud provider to provide access to applications to your tenants to um, literally point and click and consume an application without having to know the infrastructure underlying. And initially, this is kind of supported by um, Bitnami's um, applications, and also you can create your own apps, your own V apps, and publish those into um, uh, into App Launchpad. In fact, sorry, your own your own VMs. Um, and, you know, as we look at what service providers want to do in terms of having a common interface to deliver all of their services, things like this are going to become very important to be able to, you know, like see there an application, a nice UI, a tenant can provide this UI to a, a customer and a customer literally doesn't have to know what WordPress is running on, none of the networking, none of security, none of those issues are um, things they need to know about it is literally like a platform as a service where you are delivering an application without understanding the infrastructure underneath. Um, and as you alluded to, uh, York, there's also ways of doing this, uh, well, ways of delivering other services um, and tagging that information in vCenter that's been really important for a lot of service providers for a long time to be able to have that continuity of understanding you know, this VM is running this application, and I'm charging for this application, and I'm charging for this VM, um, and extracting that information is, um, you know, a part of their normal kind of billing process that they need to do. So I have two questions to kind of finish off with then as, as kind of today's overview session of the application uh, of Tenant App. I have a kind of, uh, I think, a more of a practical um, question around some of the considerations practically and you're going to ask you this one because uh, I, I think you know from a from a hands-on experience and and uh, working with service providers like you have what is the kind of practical way a service provider should start looking at this if we look at a service provider today providing you know services on cloud director how would you kind of recommend then the approach should be for them to start looking at tenant app um, getting comfortable with it and then eventually deploying it. And then I guess the other question is uh, to data is, you know, strategically longer term, it looks like we're pushing more capability into the tenant app to be able to kind of really um, support services, support diverse services that service providers want to provide. So from a strategic perspective, I want to get some kind of idea of directionally of, of your view there. So you'll just quickly back to you. You've done a great job and thank you today of explaining tenant app and yourself data as well. But practically now as a service provider, you know, what should my steps be? Yeah, first of all, um, obviously to use tenant app, um, you need VRealize operations installed. So that is the first um, thing that you have to do, get the latest version um, of VRealize operation installed app, um, connected to vCenter, NSX, um, Cloud Director or Cloud Director, and then um, set up the tenant app. That's pretty straightforward because it's a single um, OVA file to deploy and connect them. And then um, you have two, or I recommend two ways. First of all, um, have a look at the management pack in vRealize operations and see what information this management pack shows you in the vRealize operation dashboards and um, environment views. And just familiarize yourself with how vRealize operations works if you are not familiar yet with that mm -hmm. and figure out for your day-to-day -day operations how you just can use VRealize operations to be more efficient using the management pack. Um, I don't know, to give access to your first level support folks that they can directly relate the objects when they get a call. Um, yeah, a virtual machine behaves badly <laughs> from mm -hmm. a tenant perspective. They can directly look into the troubleshooting with VROps. So um, just use VROps, first of all, to um, yeah, be more efficient from your own day-to-day -day operations. And then for the tenant app, um, you can start creating pricing policies and assign them to OrgVDC and create some bills 
not yet publishing them directly into the, the yeah. tenant user interface and making them visible, but just run them on your own and use the, uh, the provider interface to look at the bills. And for the pricing policies, we've discussed that there is a lot of flexibility already in there and a lot of different parameters that you can set that allow you to very fine grained um, yeah, model your pricing policies based on your business model. But um, my strong recommendation is to start simple as simple as possible, use the out of the box, well, selectors that you have um, with according to your business model that you usually um, use the different allocation models in Cloud Director for and start as simple as possible and then grow from there and um, get yeah more and more details into the bills, what you, what you want to um, meter for and charge for. Okay, I think that's great advice. And just just to confirm, then commercially, is there any impact in me doing any of this um, off the bat? So, um, from a, a licensing perspective, the um, yep. we are ops tenant app for the chargeback mechanism. So that is. Um, included in the flex core model. So with that, you get a more or less headless VR ops installation where you just access to a tenant app and get the chargeback and billing functionality. Yeah. Um, for the using VR ops for your um, day-to-day -day operations, of course, that would be an um, additional module in the, in the flex model. Yeah, and, and, and to confirm, I think it's um, per VM um, for things like NSX components. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you do want to kind of dive into operationalizing VRIs operations, then you, you will be charged uh, according to the functionality you're using. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So, yeah. So, i.e. they can try it in this kind of headless mode where, like you say, it's just access via tenant app um, to the tenant app dashboards. Um, or they could go the full hog and really get used to VR realized operations. And we do see a, a huge amount of benefit for providers using VR realized operations. Um, it is, um, you know, very popular and used a lot out there. And um, the dashboards are, are very good out of the box, you know, just to get you that kind of immediate picture of your environment. It's amazing, it always amazes me how many providers kind of turn it on and then they suddenly find problems that they've been trying to track for <laughs> or trying to chase down for six months and suddenly they see the root cause of it. So very useful tool in any case. Okay, and um, thanks York. And, and Data, just over to you from the kind of strategic viewpoint then. Um, the longer term view for you, uh, it sounds like it's going more into like the covering the services perspective, but from a strategic perspective, how should service providers be kind of looking at uh, tenant app and the future of tenant app? Sure. Um, and again, I'll start with what uh, Yorick said, right? The right place to start tenant app is probably use it as a um, um, back of the team billing charging tool where which you can connect to your systems and um, uh, extract all the information that your billing system needs. Um, strategically speaking, I think uh, the way I see service providers adapt, adopting this um, in the future is um, to use them more, use the tenant app more and more um, about uh, pre-cooking the numbers before feeding it into your billing engines. Uh, while many of the billing engines are uh, pretty good in terms of presentation and the formats, etc., cetera, um, the, uh, creating numbers such as how many hours was uh, the num how many hours of vcpus were on under an org vdc in a given month is a hard question to answer with raw data um, and these are the kind of questions that we would want uh, service providers to start adopting our pricing policies for so if you set a one dollar charge per vcpu then essentially what you have is the number of um, hours um, per month for the number of vCPUs that were running during that month, right? So that's one step forward from a pure raw metering engine to using the capabilities of our pricing engine to pre-cook numbers before feeding into your billing engine. The um, other area that I see uh, service providers evolving after this is uh, use it as a window to expose many of the value added services uh, to your tenants. So we spoke about customized dashboards. We spoke about alerts. We spoke about um, additional services that could be offered uh, either due to be ops or um, via uh, the uh, add-on services of VCD itself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the 
um, that's the final form of evolution uh, that I see how service providers would use uh, tenant tap. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, it makes absolute sense. I think uh, the kind of deploy, start simple um, methodology, especially when you're looking at billing and metering information, um, start looking at um, perhaps, I, you know, maybe a recommendation is to look at a particular subset that you are using in your billing engine today, like your, uh, I don't know, per VM metrics, for example. Start replicating them in tenant app, checking the configurations, checking the output is correct and the calculations are correct, and then look at eventual potentially phasing um, that particular portion from your billing engine into, into tenant app. Okay, well, listen, thank you very much, Jörg and Data, for all of the information today. It's been fantastic to have you on. And I know we're going to do more deeper dives in uh, following series on Tenant App into specific things like pricing policies and configuring billing and everything else. So look forward to the next sections with you. You're Thanks welcome. a lot. Goodbye. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank you.